I am recording. And now I have to find myself again. Bear with me. Okay, from no show to CEO. There we are. So welcome everybody to from no show to CEO. I am so excited to share this live masterclass with you because I was just thinking beforehand as I was creating a coffee for myself. <laughs> it's rare that I drink coffee in the afternoons, but I'm going to the gym after, so it's okay. Um, so I was thinking about what I most want you guys to get from this. Anybody who watches this masterclass and Honestly, my motivation behind this is to help you to step up. I see so many incredible coaches, freelancers, consultants out there, and you're playing small. And I want to help you to really show up as the authority. And I'm going to help you with the mindset, but also the how to, the strategy for how to do that. So in case you don't know me, I'm just very briefly going to introduce myself after my coffee sip. My name is Pranaz Neve, N-E-E-V-E. -E. That is the first important bit of information. <laughs> and um, I'm Irish. I came to Geneva, Switzerland in 1993, I think. Yes, and um, I've been here ever since. I've got three kids here now and yeah, I really like it here. So I'm an online business fitness and mindset mentor. I use fit, focused, and financially free. They're the three pillars I use when helping my clients inside my mastermind, which I'll be telling you about at the end. I help my clients to create simple, simple, simple. Simple is key. Focused, financially free life that flows effortlessly to have order and organization. And by nature, I am not a super organized person. It's something I've developed. Everything is learnable. Everything that you want in your life, every every character, not everything, but every every character trait that you want to develop, you can develop. You can develop. You can develop confidence. You can develop gratitude, joy. All of it is by turning your attention consciously towards it. And that includes simplicity and organization as well. And rock solid clarity and rock solid boundaries. Rock solid clarity is super important for your messaging. So it's very relevant for today. So I'm going to be talking about that, getting clear about who you are, what problem you solve, what you want in your for your business and for your life. <laughs> and it really is a constant overcoming, constantly. We never escape it because as we up level, as we rise and tap more fully into our potential, we're constantly going to face ourselves, face our fears. There's going to be new fears at every level. So just get used to the fact and accept it. If you're on a journey of growth instead of stagnancy, and I think you're in a journey of growth, I'm certain of it if you're watching this, then that overcoming is just, it's just a part of life. Embrace it. It's wonderful. <laughs> so I help my clients to overcome fears of judgment, fears of um, uh, being uh, people being upset with them when they say no, overcoming imposter syndrome. Uh, that's relevant to today as well. You know, who am I to step into expert status? You know, I, I feel like an imposter. Very relevant. <clears throat> and valuing yourself enough. It's so much about self-worth. So that's what I help my clients to improve. And I like this, I took this uh, as a as a quote from uh, Marisa Mayer, who's the CEO of Yahoo, uh, a quote about uh, being a CEO, related to being a CEO. I always did something that I was a little not ready to do, a little not ready to do. So stretching outside her comfort zone. I think that that is how you grow. Do things constantly that you are a little not ready to do wow, I'm not so sure that I can do this, you say, and you push through those moments when, when there's a moment of that. <laughs> Sometimes that's a sign that something really great is about to happen. You're about to grow and learn a lot more about yourself. Oh, it's constantly learning about ourselves. And it's a wonderful um, practice of self-awareness, you know, just noticing, noticing it's all inner work. And the more that you want to tap into your personal power, rather than being a victim of circumstances, letting your outside circumstances dictate your state, which is not a clever way to live life because we're forever dependent then on our external circumstances and other people, et cetera, in order for us to feel grounded and confident and happy. It's much better idea to focus your attention on your inner state, your own personal power. And the more you work on that, the circumstances outside you begin to change. Okay, so that's a reminder that 
stretching outside your comfort zone is going to be very relevant for our becoming, you know, stepping into that CEO status. Because if you've got a business, you are a CEO of your business. And frequently, myself included, I didn't identify as such, but yes, I'm running a business. I am CEO of my business and of a six-figure business. And I help my clients to achieve six-figure uh, financial uh, to to get six figures within six to 12 months that is what I specialize in and like I said why I created the class I notice you know I see these amazing people online sometimes I message them <laughs> and comment below if you might have received one of those messages or if, if this sounds familiar you know that you know, I, I can see the special something that you have. And I don't just say that because I'm a coach, but I really do see, you know, you've got something that you can help people with and just, you know, shine, allow yourself to, you know, um, sometimes we don't see, oh, really, am I good at that? It's like, you know, it, I ask friends, you know, what do you think I'm good at? And and because sometimes it's not so obvious to us and just shine that and, um, you know, accept it as a gift, a gift to give. <laughs> and if a stranger came to your Facebook profile, this is really Facebook. It can be LinkedIn. It can be Instagram, whatever social media platforms that you are publicly marketing on. But if a stranger was to come to your profile, is it immediately obvious to them what you do and who you serve. Think about that. And that's what I notice, you know, on Facebook, I'm, I'm seeing people who are using Facebook as a means to advertise their business, but they're not specifically, you know, it's very shy, very shy and very hidden. And I get this, you know, I, that was me and I'm stepping more and more into, um, you know, more direct messaging. It's so much about your messaging and, your messaging will improve as your confidence improves. My intention is that you leave this training with the mindset and the commitment to message like a six-figure CEO or whatever kind of a CEO that you want to be, whatever kind of a freelancer consultant, whatever kind of an expert that you want to identify as, I invite you to step into that today. And because nobody else is going to um, say, yeah, it's time you can step into it now. You've got to do that. And then you gradually become that person more and more. So it starts with what problem do you solve? You've got to get very, very clear. If you are messaging online, you've got to get very, very clear about what problem you solve. So think about that. Do you know very, very clearly, are you able to state what it is, the problem that you solve? So you want to micro niche. Just a moment, I'm sorry. There's a lot of loudness coming from my children. I haven't informed them that I'm giving this class. So I will be right back. I'm just gonna let them know that I am sharing a masterclass. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh my God. Better to do that than it just constantly, you know, throughout the class be like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. So you don't need all of the pie, which means you don't need everyone on Facebook. You don't, you don't need to be available for everyone on Facebook. Or, you know, if you are, if you are a um, hypnotherapist, you don't need to hypnotize every hypnotize, hypnotize everybody. It's, you know, just choose a specific part of the pie. And it literally is like taking, you know, a slice of the pie and just talking to that slice of the pie. And it can be, you know, I think what we fear is, oh no, but then I'll miss out on potential business. But actually what you miss out on is stepping into expert status for that particular audience. So for example, it just comes to my mind, I was talking with an interpreter yesterday and she was targeting because her background was in agriculture and that's the sector she was targeting. So, you know, you become known in that sector and you're familiar with, you know, how they work, et cetera. I work with online coaches and consultants. So I know how you guys work and I'll share a little bit more about, uh, about my target market as well in a moment, but 
first you <laughs> establish credibility with a specific target market so think about who that market is and like i said uh the the pain the pain that i solve is if your income is too low and what you know i help you solve that by helping you to attract more clients to get more income to raise your income and it's great to have that six figure idea you know to think about 10,000 a month so you're probably earning about between 1,000 and 5,000 a month at the moment on average and you want to raise that to 10,000 a month so that's why you would hire me to solve that pain to solve that problem right so think about what is the pain you can also say you might be somebody like oh well I help people you know I take them on safaris to Kenya for example so that's not a pain but what you're doing is helping them to solve a problem of they want to go to on safari but they don't know where to start they don't know there's a lot of things they don't know they don't know where to stay they don't know they have you know they need a lot of advice and they would love to somebody that knows that uh, niche you know that knows that understands um uh, you know safaris in Kenya they're going to trust them with that right and the way that that person will that person will show up in their messaging talking a lot about their knowledge about it to establish credibility right so this is really about establishing credibility by by messaging and speaking to that audience as that expert does that make sense comment below I have a few people that are watching say hello comment let me know and let me know if you have any questions as well I love questions <laughs> okay so personally, I target coaches who coaches or consultants who are free spirited. So they love the freedom that the online world gives. So I really do target online entrepreneurs, which, to be honest, is a lot of people these days, <laughs> more and more. But they also value health and fitness. So that's, you know, I'm attracting, I, I will be more people who love health and fitness, because I share a lot about fitness and strength training, and people who are attracted to developing that level of health and fitness will, will be attracted to working with me rather than another coach who doesn't offer that also. So think about who is your pie slice, who are they, who are these people, get to know who these people are, you know, you're basically it's you're not when you're messaging online, you're not just messaging to the masses, you're messaging to your pie slice, right? So what is your I help? Who do you help? And, you know, what pain do you help them to solve? Okay, so think about that. And because you've got that has to be your starting point. I talked about clarity earlier, and you'll need to have that clarity before, you know, that has to be as clear as you can get it. I wouldn't say crystal clear because you don't need to be, you know, sometimes we hold ourselves back thinking, I'm not certain yet. I'm not certain yet. So I better not message anything. And that can be a brilliant way that the mind has of um, holding you back because of fear. You know, we're really scared of being visible. So we will let our minds con us into believing that, oh, I'm not clear yet. So I can't post it. So choose a niche and, you know, maybe later it will change. I've changed quite a bit. You know, I've, <laughs> you know this it's you've just got to you know just go with your gut and keep going and learning until you finally hit the nail on the head and it will change and it will evolve as you do so trust that too so also yeah my target getting this is really getting to know your target market so I just shared a little bit more about my target market understands so these, these people they understand the importance of simplicity they want they don't want to do more they want to do less they understand that simplicity is so important for their mental health and for their physical health so that they have time time such a such an asset right time uh, to focus on themselves and their self-care they, need to, they know they need strong boundaries to succeed. They understand that the courage to create those boundaries comes from high self-worth, comes from the inner work. So they understand the importance of inner work, right? So think about who your pie slice is, who, what kind of people do you want to attract to work with you? Get to know them, imagine, you know, or think about past clients that you really enjoyed working with and what kind of character traits they have. So that's your pie slice. <laughs> So all your messages should be for them. That might sound extreme, but uh, if not, you know, 80%, 80% related to solving some part of their problem. You want to have messaging, you know, what you're sharing needs to be of value to them that they 
And also, you know, the small blog posts, they're much more uh, in Facebook, they're much more uh, attention grabbing than long posts. You know, I'm guilty of writing very, very long posts that are rambling, which I love because I love writing, but I've gotten much better at cleaning them up. And I'm going to share um, towards uh, in a few slides time how I've managed to do that. Because clarity of messaging really counts as well. So questions that you can ask yourself when you're posting. There's three questions. Think about when you post something and don't overthink this, right? You know, but but does this post establish me as an as the authority, not an authority, but the authority in the area that I want to show up uh, as an authority of? You want to show that you're knowledgeable about that subject. So the person that's struggling with that problem, related problem can say, ah, this person can help me. And, you know, it doesn't, you, you don't need to go into how you're going to help them as much as, you know, the solution that you provide. Because, you know, if somebody's in pain, you know, they're not, they're not so attached to how the solution is going to be found. They're, go they're more attached to, how 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 much they can trust that they'll get the solution if they invest right so help them to take that decision does this post add value related to my audience's problem so is it is it something that's going to add value or just something random and ranting <laughs> and the final question do my audience get to know like and trust me through this content so make it a little bit personal right you know there is um Oh, I haven't really checked it out yet. I think it's called Chatbot. There's a new um, uh, AI software that apparently writes the blogs for you. And um, there's another one called Jasper. I mean, there's many of them. There's more and more <laughs> as AI uh, increases. Um, so, you know, you you could just get it written for you, but that's it misses out on the personal element and so I really disagree with, you know, there's, you know, hiring somebody to write your blogs for you. Maybe it can work, but it really removes the that personal element of knowing, liking and trusting. And what I would suggest instead is practice makes perfect. So consistently writing consistently and you will get better and better at it. And you will, as you overcome yourself and overcome your fear of, oh, it's not good enough. And you just put it out there. And, you know, you know that you realize this is a, a long game. It's not an overnight thing. It's a long game that you consistently, consistency tops like short term success any day. Actually, there's a guy I was listening to on YouTube yesterday and he was talking about um, strength training and he was saying it's better to, he said, it's much better to train at 70% effort for 10 years than at 100% effort for eight weeks. And it's so true. And it's the same, you know, with online, just, you know, just do your best, but be consistent, you know, consistently show up. Don't be a no show. Don't hide and think it's not good enough. Let go of the perfectionism. I'll talk about that soon. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> here's a photo of my dog in the snow. Dog and cat photos won't help with establishing authority. So if you looked at my Facebook profile, I shared a blog and I had planned on sharing something like that. And then I realized it's my dog's fifth birthday today. So I had to celebrate her birthday instead. So I actually did end up writing about my dog. <laughs> but I also mentioned in the post it was relevant to um, to this masterclass too. But yeah, that's, you know, what, what I've noticed sometimes with when I am working with a potential client and I check out their Facebook profile and, um, you know, they want to increase their income and it's not obvious at all from their Facebook profile what they do. And what's interesting for me, I can share um, this is general uh, uh, feedback that, you know, I notice sometimes that they're resistant to doing very simple tweaks. It's very simple, very simple, um, very simple tweaks to show what they actually do. And you know, I think that there is a fear there to overcome of, oh gosh, what will people think? You know, people might judge me if they think she's doing that, you know, and it really is to completely let go of, you know, these are your dreams and it's your vision for your future that you're creating for yourself. So don't give your power away to um, naysayers who don't have the courage to put themselves out there. And, you know, that, that really is one very important part of overcoming so that you can show up online because, you know, it does take courage at the start. I'm not 
I'm not afraid of it at all now, but I remember, you know, the first time posting on my personal profile and I used to use it for friends, you know, and I just post photos of my kids before they completely prohibited me from doing that when they became teenagers. <laughs> but, you know, it was more a family thing. And then to start sharing work-related things, it was very scary for me. And it really was like, what's she doing, you know? And I was, <gasps> you know, like feel that, yeah, I, I was being exposed or, but now I really don't care. And I don't because I've stepped into that status and that identity and I don't care what they think of me. Um, you know, nobody who is ever ahead of you will judge you. It's only the people who are behind you that will judge you. And it's because it triggers something in them because they don't have the courage to step up and do that. And that's just, that's just part of the overcoming. Remember I was talking about, you're going to be constantly overcoming in your life. That is part of the overcoming. Sorry. I realized my microphone, oops, my microphone was quite far away from me. I'm just putting it closer. So hope that hasn't affected the sound. <laughs> Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. It's one of my favorite mottos as well. Okay, so be uniquely you. So when you're showing up, when you're not being a no-show, when you're showing up as the CEO, don't think, oh, because I'm the CEO, you know, it has to be perfect. You want to obviously make it as good as you can, but things happen. <laughs> um um, but shine, shine, shine as yourself and with all your imperfections, because then you're more relatable as a human being, because there is no, there is not one perfect human being out there, right? Um, so when we're trying to show up as perfect, we're not relatable. So show up with all your imperfections. Today, I have, again, my nail varnish is chipped. <laughs> I have to go and get it removed. It's semi-permanent and it's so annoying and just don't have time or the interest to go and sit there while it gets removed. Apparently I can do it at home by wrapping silver foil or a nail varnish remover on my nails. And it's just not interesting for me. I will do it this weekend. But yeah, you know, it's like I'm being uniquely me. It's like that's the, that's the reality of it, right? And um, actually, I can tell you a, tr a true story that uh, a few years ago, but it's a funny story. Uh, a client hired me and uh, she, she had great success, actually. There's a testimonial on my website where her income tripled as a result of hiring me. Within three months, it tripled or within a month. I can't remember. It was quite extraordinary. Anyway, her name is Rachel. She's gone on to do great things and wrote a book. But um, she hired me when she came across me on a live stream on Facebook. And I was using my phone as a mirror to, I noticed there was something on my, I think, salad or something on my teeth. And I said on the live stream, oh, my God. And <laughs> so I was being human. Maybe it was a little bit gross. I don't think it was. Hopefully not. But she just thought, oh, my God, she's so natural. And um, and she hired me. So, you know, it's like, don't try to be perfect. You know, I guess that a previous version of me would have thought in my mind, oh, my God, there's salad on my teeth. So I better talk like that, you know. Maybe, right? You know, or if your children are loud upstairs, you know, making noise that you just like try and hope that they're not going to make noise. And, you know, instead of just, yeah, just be keeping it real, right? So be uniquely you and think about coaches or leaders or people who inspire you and think about what is it about them? What is it about their personality and that makes them you know, uniquely them. So this is about branding, really, and, you know, how you want to come across. And you want to come across as yourself, but maybe it's a time to reflect on, well, who am I then? <laughs> who am I? If I'm to be my uniquely myself, do I know myself well enough? Am I comfortable in my own skin to be okay with, you know, who I am and to show up as that? What is it about you? What do you want it to be about you? What is it about you that you really like and that you'd like people to, to be able to see about you, but that maybe up to now you've been afraid to show that? You know, what makes you uniquely you? And these are examples that came in my head. You might know there's quite a famous coach online that wears red. And that's kind of her brand, uniquely her brand. Her brand. There's another coach that loves fitness and has chip nails. Don't know who she is. <laughs> There's another coach I know that's famous that is very mouthy. And, you know, she shocks people. So she polarizes. Some people hate her and some people love her. I happen to love her because I think she's ballsy. You know, she's she's courageous. And I find it hilarious, you know, because, because I don't take it personally. Like she can be quite, you know, you're lazy and you'll never succeed. And, and I just go, ha, ha, ha. She's right. You know. I am 
<laughs> but I, you know, I don't go, how dare she? But, you know, I, I because I see it as helpful in a way. And uh, it's just, you know, so she attracts a certain kind of people to her audience. And then other people, they will run a mile from her and think she's awful. But, you know, having the courage to be yourself, it will, you know, polarize. And that's some, sometimes we, we just want to stay beige and neutral. So everyone will like us. But you know, that's just, it's just not possible for everyone to like us because some people will find you boring because you're beige and, right? So just be yourself fully, fully, fully. This is so much about personal growth, so much of it. It is business strategy, but like the, the business strategy, you are your product, you are your brand. So the more that you shine and the more self-confident that you feel on the inside, the higher your self-worth will be, the better your boundaries will be. Um, it's a win-win. So own your personal awesomeness. You do you do not need to be loud. If you're not loud by nature, you know, don't compare yourself to the coach who's successful and she's very loud. You know, you can be gentle and quiet. Honestly, I promise you, because there are people who will be attracted to that. Um, you know, you don't have to be shiny or have great nails. <laughs> you just need to be you you know what's funny actually what I was thinking about because it can also it's nice to have like oh yeah she's the coach who like you know for me it would be oh yeah Neve she's the coach who uh, loves uh, fitness and she goes to the gym a lot and she's on a fitness journey which I am <laughs> um and by the way, inside the six six figure flow, inside this Facebook group, there is a guide section, and I have a program called the Fit Program, and there is eight lessons in there related to the Fit Program. So check them out if you're interested to get good tips on uh, efficient fat shredding and um, yeah, healthy healthy approach to um, feeling good. Um, but while I was thinking, in addition, I could just have different color nails every week and it could be like, oh, yeah, she's the one who has, you know, who, <laughs> or it could be known as the one, she's the one who always has chipped nails, but no, I don't want to be known as that. <laughs> so, but just, you know, I'm giving you just food for thought here. Like, how do you want to be known? Maybe you want to be the coach that wears a particular color. I personally, it, doesn't resonate with me at all to have to show up in a particular color and for everyone else to do that. But I could be like, yeah, you know, you've got, you've got to have yellow nail varnish to be, to be part of my gang. <laughs> I'm joking. But just, you know, it's, it's food for thought. Be uniquely you, but shine. Okay, so comment with any ideas that you have for how you can be uniquely you. And what is it? What kind of an edge do you want to, you know, to have fun with this as well, right? To show your personality as well as your expertise. Don't, don't just make it about, you know, showing up as a circus clown. You know, you want to show your expertise as well, which I'm doing right now. Okay, so be direct as well in your messaging. Don't be afraid to promote yourself because you know, you've got to let people know how you can help them. And if you're shy of, oh gosh, I, I you know, it's like, um, I want to share all this with you, but, but it's okay. You know, um, you know, don't pay me for it. It's when people put, put money behind, you know, when, when they invest in themselves financially, that they're really going to show up and back themselves a lot more than when they get something for free. Right. If you hire a fitness trainer, you'll show up and you will make sure that you will, um, you know, follow the program. But if you don't pay, it's like, ah, well, I won't go today, right? For example. So don't be afraid to promote yourself. You're helping people by promoting yourself. You're helping your clients whose problems you want to solve. And, you know, do you want to solve their problems? There's people out there that are really struggling that you can help. So it's actually your responsibility, I believe, because I do believe we have a, a responsibility to give back to society. It's a gift to be alive. And I do believe that we have a responsibility to, um, you know, tap into our full potential. And that means showing up. And that means letting people know how you can help, right? So it involves stretching outside your comfort zone. Fantastic growth opportunities. It involves getting over yourself. That sounds a bit mean. Get over yourself. But I hope you understand what I mean, you know, that um, we, take, we can take ourselves so seriously. And that can really help. And it can just allow you to let your hair down a bit and realize that, 
I, I don't have to take myself too seriously. It's okay. I don't have to take myself too seriously. I can just, you know, do my best and be open to learning from my mistakes and continuously improving and to enjoy it. I really love this work. I really feel so blessed. And yeah, I, I love it every day. And uh, I enjoy the journey no matter what. And it's not always been easy. Believe me, you know, there's been very challenging times. And that's where I was forced to. That's the wonderful benefit of being an entrepreneur, you know, because you're forced to uh, to, to show up unless you've got a rich partner who's supporting you, um, which can be a, a pity, really, because um, if you have a safety net, you'll use it. And it's best not to have a safety net. So put yourself into a position where you're absolutely have no other option but success that's the best way to succeed it's a risky way to succeed but um then you're going to force yourself to show up keep showing up and keep working on your directness so you know it's something that i'm working on i'm really learning now to have more compelling messaging and um it's definitely you know it's just ongoing to learn that and to learn copywriting and being unapologetic you know don't be shy in it you know check over what you wrote and you know, are you kind of, you know, being quite, there's a difference between humility and kind of apologizing, you know, um, claim it, claim your expertise, you know, whatever way that you know that you can help people own it, you know, that's your job to step into it. And often people think, oh, well, I just need this other uh, certification. I just need this other uh, training. And actually you'll do that training and you'll still have to overcome yourself. You know, that's the biggest work to do is to overcome ourselves and put ourselves out there. And we can hide behind studying and learning forever and think, I just need to know more and then I'll be ready. And it's our mind completely conning us um, into believing that that we're not enough. And what if you decided that you are enough and what you're offering is enough that you're just you just need to be a few steps ahead? I am not an expert copywriter. I am not an expert messenger, but I'm a few steps ahead enough to be able to share with you guys. And I do understand the psychology behind it. So, you know, um, somebody could look at me and say, what's she doing giving a masterclass on that? She's not an expert, but I know I'm a few steps ahead and I know I have value to offer and I own that. And, you know, it's uh, if it doesn't resonate with people, that's fine with me. But I know that it will resonate with some people. If it's resonating with you, comment below. Oh, I have comments. Great. Sorry, I didn't I didn't uh, see. Oh, Anne, Annalise, Rimley, that's fine. Hey, Zami, thanks for commenting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Nina, about profiles. Oh, here's a question. So sorry that I missed these comments. They weren't, they didn't come up initially. So, and I have Julia watching and Camilla as well. Where do you find your target client? So Camilla, this is, that's a great question, a great point. So uh, personally, it's on Facebook. Now, Facebook groups. So let me think. Let's imagine that you're, I know Camilla, I know you're not, but let's imagine you are a dog trainer because actually that is, you know, there is, there are people, I know people that are earning a lot of money teaching people how to train their dogs online. So imagine that I want to start a business uh, helping people to train their dogs. I know one actually, and she uh, teaches people, She her micro niche is uh, to train their puppies, right? So she's really niched it down even more. Um so you search in groups, you, you look for, for groups that uh, of people that are uh, looking for that solution because they will, there's a good chance they will have joined a group or you create your own group and you say, I am, that's a really good way to do it. Like what I did with the Six Figure Flow, it's, it's a very recent new group. And you let people know, hey, join this group and inside this group, this is the problem we solve. So that's a really good way to um, uh, to find them. And now it's, it's coming back to me, Camilla, about uh, now I do remember having chatted with you who your target market is. And yeah, you could absolutely invite them to a Facebook group and offer them something for free, like I'm doing now, so they get to know you. And then, um, you know, if they like you, they'll stay with you and, and uh, you know, you'll be able to offer them more value. And then maybe they want more specialized support and they will hire you or they'll buy your program if you're creating, uh, if you create a, a training program for them. So Facebook is amazing. I think it's actually Facebook is the one that has the most 
the largest amount of people, you know, more so than Instagram. Don't quote me, <laughs> more so than the others. I think I, I read that statistic somewhere, but it doesn't have to be Facebook. If you prefer LinkedIn, really depends professionally. You know, I know that I, uh, after giving the talk to interpreters on Mondays, I've quite a few interpreters in here now, which is wonderful. Welcome. Um, and you might find LinkedIn is more that you find your target market the, uh, on LinkedIn. So think about where they hang out, really. Obviously, you know, it can be at local events now, meetups, etc. But find people, you know, find where they hang out, you want to reach them. And um, so yeah, it involves some brainstorming, message me privately, if you want to brainstorm that further. But yeah, you want to make sure that you're speaking to um, people that, uh, that need that problem solved, right? You could be speaking, and I've done this, you know, and you're not attracting your ideal client at all. Actually, what I haven't done too much of is you know, there's lots of Facebook groups for me where um, people are, you know, the coaches that I'm wanting to attract. I know the the Facebook groups that they hang out in. And it's, yeah, it's just <laughs> a strat strategy that I haven't uh, implemented too much yet, but I do plan on doing that in 2023. Yeah, so you've got to make sure, and I thank you for asking that question. It's really important to to seek them out, right? You, because you don't want to um, be speaking to grandmothers who want to learn how to knit, right? Because they're, you know, unless that's the problem you're solving is helping grandmothers learn how to knit, maybe, you know? So yeah, that's a very, very valid point. Okay, there was some more questions. Sounds great. Thanks, Anne and Anina. About profiles on SMS. No, is it SMS? Perhaps having a personal profile that's different from a more serious business inclined one would help. About profiles on SMS. I'm not sure what you mean by SMS. Anin, and I think your name is Anina. You'll have to remind me <laughs> again. Um, personal profile is different from a more serious business inclined one. So I, you might be talking about, well, I, what I can say is on Facebook, because I did consider this having one profile for family. And uh, this is actually a good point, even if it doesn't answer your question, please, please ask it again if it doesn't answer. But I did consider having, you know, just family uh, profile and then have a separate profile for my business. And I remember actually even discussing that with a coach and they were saying, yeah, you know, you could, but you know, and she said, well, I just never did. And, you know, this, people just get used to it. You know, mine is much more business focused now. And well, I guess it, uh, it's kind of, ça tombe bien. I mean, I'm speaking in French now. It's uh, ça tombe bien. It fell well. It, it kind of all fell into place um, because, well, my kids became teenagers and prohibited me. <laughs> I'm, I'm banned from posting. I get away with the odd one, but um, I'm banned from posting photos of them, which I respect, I get. Um, so, you know, I wasn't really posting family stuff anymore on Facebook. Um, you know, to my own family in Ireland, I'll send them on WhatsApp privately. Um, so it became much more business focused and I do sometimes share personal stuff, but, um, but you know, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's the majority is business and a, a lot I share about fitness, but I do see that as part of my business since that's a very strong focus for me and the work that I help clients to improve their fitness as well. So, so you can do, you absolutely can, but it gets complicated when you have two profiles and then it's like, well, why would I bother? Why would I bother? And just think about what energy is that coming from? Is that coming from fear? And by the way, a great question always to ask yourself is, is this coming from fear or faith? Faith that I'm going to succeed, faith that I'm on the right aligned path for me and I'm, you know, doing what I love and um, having the impact that I want. That's faith based. So every decision that you're making, think, is this coming from fear? Fear of what people think. I do get it that, you know, we have to also respect if we're not ready and, and, you know, I'm not going to say, yeah, but just do it anyway, because we have to take care of our nervous system, you know, and um, yeah, we have to respect, you know, how much do we want to stretch outside of our comfort zone, you know, and respect our limits and, you know, the, to, to grow gradually, but really getting clear on, do I really want to be consumed with what these people are thinking of me and the thing is they're not really thinking of you they're too busy thinking about themselves <laughs> that's the thing you know so which is great because that means that we can just get on with it and uh it's very freeing to realize that 
um, yeah, you know, just the more that you can show up free, free to, to be yourself. And um, it's like, uh, there's a great quote from Byron Katie, you know, she says something about it's, it's the more that we seek out that approval and, you know, show up in a way to seek it out, the more we lose it. And when you completely let go of the need for it, that's when you get it. That's the irony of it. The more free you are as yourself, you'll naturally attract like-minded people. And that's what you want to do. You want to attract like-minded people, you know, not people who like you because of a certain way that you show up, which is exhausting to show up as that if it's not you. Much better to be your genuine self. And it does require courage, you know, it's a work in progress. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. Is this coming from fear or faith? I love that. Yeah, I love that too. I love that. Oh, Sungai is here from Zimbabwe. Hello. SM is social media. Thank you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. It was like my coach said, you know, last week, you know, he's challenging me to, he's, he's giving me loads of food to eat. Well, he's not literally giving me the food. He's in Northern Ireland. Um, <laughs> But telling me, you know, this, like, I'm on 2000 calories now more than 2000 calories daily. And um, he's saying, you know, make this food count. I want lots, of, lots of PBs. And I'm like, what the heck are PBs, you know? And um, yeah, so they're personal bests. <laughs> I'm not very good. I know PRs, personal records, but PBs, I didn't know. So PBs is sort of personal best and SMs, the social media. So simple. <laughs> it's funny. So um, definitely makes sense. Good. Annalise, I'm glad. Yes. 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 Social media. And Annalise got it. SM is social media. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so, so yes, that did answer your question. Um, then I'm sorry. No, I don't remember uh, 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 who asked that was uh, Anna and Nina. Um, that, yeah. So you can have separate profiles, but yeah, it's up to you. Okay, be unapologetic in your messaging. I want to go back to that because there's a real, I think that really helps as well. There's certain things to remember, you know, if you're taking notes, remember this, like, you know, am I being unapologetic or am I being like, oh, you know, just a little bit apologetic. And, you know, there's certain words that we use, like the word just, or, or I'm, I'm only, or I'm just, or or uh, maybe it's like, drop it, drop it, drop those words from your vocabulary and be direct and unapologetic and own it, you know, claim that authority. And yes, this really helps me as well is remembering, you know, when I make it about me, me focused, then I forget about all those people who I could be helping if I wasn't afraid. So make it about their growth. It's like, okay, I'm gonna get out of my own way. I'm getting in my way with my head you know, overthinking things and wanting it to be better. I'm getting out of my way and I'm just going to show up because it's about their growth and it feels so good. That feeds me when I see people having um, positive transformations. And the only way that I can succeed in getting those positive transformations for people is by showing up. So show up imperfectly, show up imperfectly and make it about them. Don't be afraid to promote yourself. Yes, okay, same, that's the same slide. Yes, this is good. Um, <clears throat> good, okay. Keep the questions coming and the comments coming and they'll read them on my phone. I love it, I love it to, to have that interaction. So thank you. Um, this is a fabulous tool for writing because like I'm saying, you know, be direct, be concise. And this is a screenshot. It's called the Hemingway app. It's actually, it's actually free and I paid $20 for it. And I'm not really sure why I paid extra because the online version um, is the same as, so if you pay the $20, you can download it as an app, but it is the same. So top tip, don't pay the $20. <laughs> but this is a brilliant app with, if you see on the right, I hope you can manage to see it. You might have to scroll in. It will tell you when you, so I write my posts, I, I use Google Docs and then I copy it in here. And I might've started out with this post at a grade five. You see, it says grade three, which means, the reading level is grade three. Now you wanna have this low. So let me explain why. 
uh, so for example, Donald Trump, he apparently it was his speech where his speeches were checked and um, he speaks at a grade three and then they did other presidents and there's another president that spoke at a grade seven and another at a grade nine. And it's better the more you'll reach more people and that's part of his success. He's, he's clever in that way. You know, sometimes he might sound, you know, some of the things he says, we won't go into that. We're not going to talk politics. <laughs> Definitely not. But but I'm, I'm sharing it as an example because he knows that um, you've got to, like the, the lower the grade of speaking, the more basic that you can keep it because people's attention span is so, uh, is so low, you know, it's, it's better to speak at, uh, uh, you know, in a, in, a more, in a simple, concise way. So I have simplified my writing a lot recently. It used to be, when I started, it was like a grade nine or even a grade 11. So I'm very conscious of that. And interestingly, T. Har Becker, he's a famous money coach, financial coach, and I was on his newsletter. And just out of curiosity recently, I saw a blog come in of his and I copied and pasted it. I don't think he doesn't write the blogs. I think it's his son or somebody. But I copied and pasted it into the Hemingway app to see what grade it was at because I thought it was good. It was compelling. Grade two. Grade two. So I think this is really important. It's I just find this app to be super, and um, I'd highly recommend it if you want to simplify your writing. Now, <laughs> you probably can't see in your screen, and I'm sorry for that. But when you go into the app, what I love, my favorite thing, there's one, two, three, four, five different things it will check for. The fifth thing, the thing at the bottom, is the one I always look for first. Uh, it checks how many of the sentences are hard to, are very hard to read. So it's a zero of 51 sentences for me in that post I wrote this morning were very hard to read. And does that say three of 51 sentences are hard to read. So it highlighted in, oops, it highlighted in yellow the ones that are hard to read. And so since then, I think I, I would have adjusted them. I make the sentences shorter. That usually does. And, and then sometimes if I change it, it will go up to a grade four. And I'm like, no, I want to keep it at a grade three. So, so I have fun with that. And this helps me, you know, when you are, uh, you know, messaging your audience, you want to speak to them in a way that's simple, easy to understand, and that they get it. And, you know, I think I made the mistake in the past of, I think sometimes I knew what I was saying, but I'm not sure that other people did. <laughs> Probably still happens. But hey, we just we just do our best. And um, the important thing is consistency and getting it out there. So don't let perfectionism stay in the way get in the way, but tools like this will definitely help you. Okay, how to overcome fear of visibility. Wonderful, Julia. Oh, that's so great. I'm so glad. Hemingway editor. Hemingway editor. Yes, that's it. That's what it's called. Yeah. And message me afterwards. Message me afterwards. And I can let you know um, about the anything that I've shared here. I love to chat in Messenger. So how to overcome the fear of visibility. Haha. -ha. So like I said, this really is a mindset thing. You know, it's like, oh my God, you know, you know, it can be really scary. It can, we can feel so vulnerable, right? And it's very real, you know, it can bring up past trauma. It's it's not uh it's no joke. So acknowledge that it's there, you know, you don't want to ignore it and push it down. There is lots of tools that you can use to overcome that fear. Honestly, journaling is a great tool. You know, I do it every morning. I, I identify one because consistency is key. So I will I will journal my goals every morning and I will journal why I believe my goals are possible. And then I will look for why do I not, why, why I don't believe they're possible. And that's, I will zone in on why do I not believe it's possible? And then I will, um, uh, you know, shift perspective on that. It's so much about mindset. So that helps me a lot. That's my preferred way. I also do EFT tapping, which is, um, again, message me. I'd be happy to share videos with you. There's a guy called, is it Brad Yates? I think his name is, if anybody else is a passionate tapper. Tapping is like, even though I feel scared to show up online, you literally tap on points. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. It's like, I'm literally tapping. I've just done a very speedy version of it. You do it much slower and, and you keep this tapping and, and, you know, it really is acknowledging the fear is there and I deeply and completely love and accept myself. You know, you're accepting that, that part of you and um, you're not saying, trying to say, I'm not scared. You know, it's like, I'm human. I am. And I'm not going to let the fear hold me back. Faith over fear. 
I recommend making it non-negotiable to post daily. You know, if you think, well, no, I take Fridays off or whatever, and, and you know, week daily, right? Decide on a schedule. It can be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It can be, yeah, if you want it to be just Mondays, go for it. If you want one good piece of content or every Thursday, whatever. Personally, I love to create. I, I kind of sometimes write too much. I know, and I get distracted from my work because it's it's like a therapy for me. And um, so sometimes I'll write two blogs in a day. It just kind of comes through me if I'm, I'm if I'm in flow and and I just type it fast. Um, but um, that's you know something that came to me with practice because I made it non-negotiable. And there's a story behind how I got good at uh you know showing up so often and how i you know my writing is the way it is now um i paid ten thousand dollars a few years ago to be in a program scared the life out of myself by doing that <laughs> and i remember listening intently to the coach the first training it was a replay for some reason and she said that you are a result of your habits. So create that daily habit of writing. I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> so I wrote every single day and consistently, and it was just a non-negotiable for me. I made that promise to myself. I backed myself really. And um, it's just a habit that's developed over time. You, your, your life is a result of your habits. So consistency is so important. Ah, there we go. Consistency is key. I say that a lot. <laughs> and it break, it helps to break through the fear. You know, how do you break through fear? By actually taking the action. Yeah, it's actually, we're usually more afraid of, you know, thinking about it, but then we do it. Um, you know, I had a friend who was afraid to um, share videos on LinkedIn. Her, her audience is uh, their executive coaches. No, they're sorry, they're she's an executive coach, they're uh, corporate. And she was so afraid to show up on video and she was really afraid, but she did it. And then she said, I was more scared about the thought of doing it than doing it. And then she did it again. And then she did it again. And then the fear went away. You know, that's how you overcome a fear is by doing it. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's wonderful to do that. Yeah. Recognize how crucial this overcoming is to your success. So if you're feeling like, oh, I should do that, but I don't want to, ah, this overcoming is what I need in order to, you know, raise my profile and um, attract the slice of the pie, attract that, uh, those clients that I want to attract. M you know, read books. There's so many great books that are a help. And, you know, you want, okay, books are just going to give you information rather than transformation. So just be aware of that. All of the, you know, the real transformation comes from, you know, deciding to back yourself and go all in with it. The pep talk app. I love the pep talk app. I recently discovered it and I'm, I actually want to buy it for my kids. Um, there's a free version though. You don't have to, um, you don't have to pay for the paid version. Um, and it's got some just really good, inspiring daily talks. And I think it's so important to hear these, you know, that motivation personally. Physical exercise, that's the reason why it's, you know, I've integrated it as part of my work is because I believe that it, it develops our confidence our energy levels, um, it lengthens our lives. And <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of strength training. If you look at my Facebook profile, you see it. But only, by the way, only since the 1st of September last year. <laughs> it's Now, I was always into fitness. And before that, I, I think it was more running. And um, I, I made daily yoga. I pra practice yoga, excuse me, every morning, like 15 or 20 minutes or 25 minutes of yoga. Uh, that's a non-negotiable for me. I need it for my mental health. I need it for just stretching my body. And it's a great way to start the day and make me hungry for my breakfast. <laughs> so that's just something I have to do and to avoid injury. But um, yeah, the strength training has really been a game changer for me. And um, I practice it five times a week and it's quite incredible and fun. It really is fun. And I just, it's, for me, it's a meditation, you know, I just... I close my eyes and yeah, I really get in the zone and listen to my music and yeah, geek out on it. Join a mastermind. There's nothing like being with like-minded people who are also scared. And then you see, oh my God, they're scared and they did that, or they're scared and they said that. And, oh, you know, it, it inspires you to, you know, when you're, when there's other people like, 
And it's surround yourself with those kind of people that are moving forward. Those are the kinds of people to, um, you know, help rise you up rather than pull you down. If, if, you know, some people just won't get it, you know, they're like, well, why don't you just go and get a job and you don't have to worry about all of that, putting yourself out there and all that stress, you know, but they don't get the personal growth that comes from it and the fulfillment and the satisfaction of, Oh, I did it. And and then I got a client and it's wonderful. You know, it's like, that's how it works. <laughs> and I have a private coach in your corner. Obviously I'm biased, <laughs> but you know, if you've got somebody that's helping you and friends are great and they're not always, they're not going to challenge you in the same way as a professional is. So that's why for me, you know, when I went into the gym on the 1st of September, I, I actually, I entered a fitness competition and I hired a coach and absolutely no regrets there because I knew that I, because I tried before and, um, you know, on my own without that accountability and, um, yeah, I never really got beyond dipping my toes in. So if you're serious and hopefully you are serious, you want to go way beyond dipping your toes in, you want to be that CEO, not an Osho, then um, I would highly recommend that you take that leap. Flow! I love the word flow. <clears throat> so, um, and <laughs> flow is really, it's interesting actually, you know, what is flow, but so there have been some books written on it and I couldn't give you a precise definition of it. Let me just, before I go on to explaining that, is there any brilliant tool? Yes, good. Okay, just, just checking if there's any more questions. <laughs> so flow, sl flow, ah, what did I say? Don't remember what I said when I created this these slides this morning. Flow is doing your daily habits passionately. That is it, actually. Yes, that was a good definition that I created. I do believe it. You know, for me, it's like I do habit stacking. You know, there's certain, you know, I might sound like a control freak. I'm not, but I just know that this order serves me to, you know, I get up and... <laughs> Okay, I I get up and I I make my porridge with my protein powder and uh, my coffee. And once that's done, then I come downstairs with my coffee and I do yoga. And then I uh, after my yoga, I um, yeah shower and eat my breakfast while journaling. So it's all I'm stacking the habits on top of each other. And then my journaling usually will lead into a blog, I'll get some inspired idea. So writing helps, you know, if I'm writing in a journal, and, um, you know, the morning pages is a habit that I highly recommend from Julia Cameron, she wrote a book called The Artist's Way. And she recommends consistently every day, writing three pages first thing in the morning, because it gets your creative juices flowing. And flowing that's the word it's like you know what some people would describe it as and you know it's like that it's like you get out of your own way and you allow that those creative ideas there the space to flow through so but it's also you know for me it's like going to the gym is part of that flow as well you know it's just um feeling good doing things that feel good and self-care getting out in nature taking care of yourself that feels like flow so yeah, I said, when I write in my journal, I get inspired ideas. I get inspiration for a blog. The better you take care of yourself, the more your business will flow. You are your product. And, you know, if you're really stressed out, you're not going to get those creative ideas or even, you know, the ideas of like, oh yeah, I should reach out to that client or maybe that client needs help. Or this morning I got a super idea for my mastermind and I'm like, oh my God, it was just, it really excited me. And where did these ideas come from? It's it's quite magical, you know, where do they come from? I heard just yesterday, I think I heard uh, somebody say, it's like, they're just chemicals. Those thoughts and ideas are chemicals in our brain. <laughs> it's funny, but, <clears throat> you know, allow them to come through and um, the lower your stress level, then the more chance they have of coming through. So take care of yourself really is the moral of that story and get out of your own way to allow the creative flow to happen. So you want to stay out of fear and stay in faith as much as possible. And honestly, that's just, it's a decision. It's like, it's a decision to let go and to do things imperfectly and to show up and to take risks. You know, I think I've probably written some disastrous posts in the past and even, you know, that's, that's just part of it. That's part of the growth, you know, be being okay with making mistakes and, you know, daring right and actually a coach that I work with I remember she's saying if you're not afraid to post it then it's not a good blog 
no, that doesn't happen to me. You know, I'm, it's rare that I'm afraid to post something now. That's if you want to be controversial. That was the, that was the mouthy coach that said that. <laughs> so you don't have to, uh, you know, scare yourself um, in a ridiculous way. But, you know, you can challenge yourself a bit. <laughs> So how do you get that expert status, that CEO status to claim that slice of the pie? You claim it for yourself. It's like, you know, people think like, oh, I'm not ready yet. But what have you just decided that you were? You know, what is the difference between the people who are successful and those that are not? I mean, yes, some get recognized and, you know, but it's but it's rare. So much of it is mindset and just deciding, you know, that you want to you want to shine. You want to your ideal clients to find you and in order for them to do that. And also. The more that you claim it and step into it, the better you'll get at it because then you'll be like, oh, I want it. Like for me, you know, with six helping clients to get to six figures in six to 12 months, you know, I'm much more focused now on helping clients with that strategy. And, you know, when that was not my niche, I wouldn't have zoned in on that as much. But, you know, it's things like this, this kind of messaging will help you to raise your profile. So I'm more now that I have this niche, the uh, the the six figure niche. I'm much more focused on that, right? So when you claim it as your niche, you will automatically then become more of an expert. So be really careful, you know, if you're currently being available to everybody uh, as uh, you know to solve their problem. No, choose you know niche in and become that expert and that the go to person in that area. Just decide. I say that a lot as well. I say be consistent and I say just decide. <laughs> you know, it's it really, I know it sounds very basic, but it's like, oh, really? Is that is that what I have to do? I don't I I, I thought that somebody else would decide it for me. No, you decide. You decide that you're going to be that six-figure CEO or whatever it is that you want to be, that you truly want to be. Just decide it now. Let's just take a moment, god damn it. And right now, it's as good a time as any to decide that you're stepping into that. Seriously. And from now on, you act like that authority. Decide that you are that person that solves that problem and that you're really good at what you do and you're really dedicated to helping your clients to get that result. Decide it and show up as that authority, being very clear, concise, and as, <laughs> as clear and concise as possible and knowing also that it's going to improve with time. But if you have that decision made internally, that's going to shine through. And obviously we've got demons and devils on our shoulder telling us, oh, you're not quite good enough. That's ridiculous. People will laugh at you. Who do you think you are? <clears throat> You'll have that there. And <clears throat> you've just got to, honestly, I pray, you know, for just, because we don't want to listen to that because then the people we want to help don't get the benefit. So it's like, you know, really um, just ask if, if you're not, if you don't have uh, faith in a higher power, then just set the intention, you know, that I'm only going to listen to supportive voices. <laughs> That's why the pep talk app is good. It's really, it's good to hear the, the, the that kind of positive um, motivation <clears throat> and encouragement. So you are a six-figure CEO. If that's who you want to be, decide that you are. Who are you not to claim it? You might have this devil on your shoulder saying, who am I to claim that? Who are you not to? Who are you not to? Is there a reason? Let me know a reason. Put it in the comments. Let me know a reason why you should not claim it and step into that and develop, you know, do the work that will bring you to that level. It might take you a bit longer, so be it. Or you might get there really fast. You know, it's like, let go of the, the precise outcome, but set the intention and just be committed to enjoying the journey of getting to there. So if you have a reason why you should not claim that, speak now so I can challenge you on it. <laughs> I'm always worried about negative, com negative comments to my post. Annalise, thanks for sharing that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because um, negative comments on posts, well... <laughs> I actually recently shared something quite controversial. It was it was poking a bit, and um, but I you know I think it's sometimes it's tough love that I share you know because I think uh, that uh, sometimes that's what we need. And I got some comments, and somebody openly shared, "I've been following you, and now I'm not following you anymore, Neve." And and you know what? And she, and she said, "I can't even remember the context," but she said something like, "I was hiding." I can't remember, and. Um, <clears throat> And I replied and said, well, if I was hiding, I would delete this. I would go, oh. <laughs> but I know I left it there because I want people to be able to make up their own minds. And I'm, 
you know, this is me, this is who I am. And, and I'm okay with it. I'm really okay. I did not lose any sleep over it. And it's kind of funny to me because actually she, she took something personal personally and, and it wasn't directed to her at all. You know, it's like, we don't like it. That's what I was saying at the start of this masterclass about the mouthy coach that I love. I find her hilarious because I don't take these things personally. And I love that, you know, to, um, you know, because we are, you know, lazy, we do buy into our excuses. And I think ah, that's what the post was something around excuses, you know, and because our excuses, I know people have genuine limitations and I get that. And I really, the last thing I want to do is hurt those people. But often, you know, there's something we can do. If we think, you know, oh, well, I can't do anything because of some excuse. It's like, mm, could you just do a little bit, you know? For example, well, I can't go to the gym and strength train because I have a broken leg. Mm, could you do some small arm workout that might not, you know, um, uh, interfere with the healing? Or could you do, you know, there's maybe something you could do, you know, just getting curious. We, like, we, we buy into excuses that, let us off the hook which is fine if you want to buy into the excuses but with that comes pain right because we're here to grow as I really do believe that and you know if we buy into that we're, we're not we know deep down that we're we're letting the fear rule we're letting the devil on our shoulder win and we all have obstacles and sorry I'm getting sidetracked and it's like you know fearing negative comments don't fear them because you know actually you know, it can be interesting to, you know, I, they're very interesting for people to read. <laughs> you can, if you scroll down my Facebook feed, you'll eventually come to the post that's there. And hey, you know what? I respect those people's opinions. They have a right to disagree with me. I'm not here to say, I'm right, you're wrong. Um, so, so that's okay too. And people can make up their own minds. People can also disagree with me and doesn't mean that they, they're like, oh, I don't agree with Neve on that. But you know, I like what she shares otherwise, you know, it's just keeping it real, authentic, and not saying, oh, people mightn't like that, I'll delete it, you know, it's just, you know, showing up as yourself, because you want to attract people, I know it really depends on the profession that you're in, you know, if you're a translator, right, you know, you're, it's, it's maybe not the same, but, um, you know, for me with, I want to work with clients who resonate with me, you know, and so they have to get to know me so that they can make that decision because it's going to get awkward if I was hiding a certain part of myself. And um, then they, you know, said, oh, I didn't know. Like, actually, my company, I've not registered officially yet, but it's and it's it's edgy. The name of my company, I'm probably going to change it to the F word, which for some people is shocking. Oh, my God, Neve, what are you thinking? For me, the F, all the great words start with F. It's fun. It's frolicking. It's fearless. It's feisty. It's fantastic. It's fabulous. And it's also cheeky because it's kind of a play on the F word itself. It's kind of funny, you know, and but, you know, some people that's just shocking for them, right? And if somebody hired me and then they discovered my company name, <laughs> then they said, oh my God, I don't like Neve anymore. It's going to affect the trust, right? In the relationship. So you've got to, you've got to show up as yourself. And it's impossible to have everyone like us. And when we let go of that need, we get to live freely, comfortable in our own skin and um, enjoy the people, you know, we don't have to hang out with uh, uh, or have conversations with those people that um, don't resonate with us. So that's my thoughts on that. And that's just, it requires courage. And really it's like, do I want to let those people's opinions have that much power over me obviously I don't want to offend anybody on purpose right but you have triggered them it's on them not you says Julia yeah 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 absolutely yeah and um yeah it's really interesting but that's uh we can't please everybody and I I prefer to um you know not I, I don't want to offend people but not to be I don't want to be too careful either <laughs> and I get you know it's like I, I am somebody who can understand both sides of the argument in everything in religion in politics in pro or anti-vax I, I can understand uh both both sides of the conversation and um yeah it's just it's an interesting part about us humans isn't it <laughs> you're never going to be able to please everybody right unless you have zero opinions and you're just a yes person and that's uh you don't want to be like that do you <laughs> okay so 
Right. So we've all decided now. Have we all decided? Yes. Please put yes that you are a six figure CEO or whatever you want to be. I mean, you might not have that specific goal, but um, yeah, I want you to claim it. I want you to claim something that challenges you, that feels really good. And um, just step into that now and visualize yourself as that person. Be brave. It does require courage, but a courageous life, I believe, is a well lived life. Then you're on your deathbed. You can say, yeah. I did things that really scared me and, you know, no regrets, no regrets. <laughs> okay. This I love, and this is thanks to, I just caught this on LinkedIn this morning. I'm sorry if you can't see this, but I'll explain it to you. There's two, there's two different spirals. Um, and I apologize. I feel bad. The person I, I on LinkedIn, I don't remember their name, but I'm grateful. If you go to my LinkedIn profile, I commented on their post. You'll see who wrote it. Her name is Kathleen. don't remember her last name, but the original person is Matt Surili. This comes from, and it's a spiral. So the prof this, this is what I think this is really good awareness to have if you are a perfectionist, which perfectionism is basically fear. So <clears throat> try something. If you try something new and you make a mistake, and you say, oh, I'm not going to do that again because, oh, my God, that was so scary. So your comfort zone gets smaller. And then you try something new and you make a mistake. And if you have, oh, I'm not going to do that again, that's scary, your comfort zone will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And at the inside of the spiral, you don't try anything new anymore and you're stuck because and the reason you're stuck is it's basically your response to the mistake instead of. Um, you know, learning from the mistake, which you'll see in the next spiral, um, you know, choosing that different perspective, you're saying, oh, I'll never do that again. That was so scary. And that can really hold us back. I often ask clients, you know, when they have a fear of showing up, it's like, did you show up before or did you do reach out to before and um, or did you do some kind of a job before and you had a bad experience with it because that can really hold us back if something happens and it can hold us back too much and it's because our response to that instead of processing it and getting help from a coach or you know somehow finding uh, a way to get past it we're allowing it to um, have power over us and then it get yeah we get smaller and smaller we shrink more and more instead of the I am enough spiral. I love this. This is beautiful. So <clears throat> in this one, you, it starts in the center, this spiral. Try something new, make a mistake, because we do, we, we make mistakes. And then you learn something from it. Your knowledge base gets larger because you're learning, right? So I actually say, you know, there's no failure. There's only learning, right? There's no, the only failure is the failure to try, because if you don't try, you don't learn. So your knowledge base gets larger. You try something new. You make a mistake. I learned something new. So you're excited about learning, right? You don't focus on the failure. You focus on, ah, it's like um, uh, Edison, isn't it? Thomas Edison, who created the light bulb. And it took him like a thousand and one tries. And he said, I didn't fail a thousand times. I just discovered a thousand ways not to, build, to make the light bulb, right? And that's the same with online business as well. You know, there's going to be so much figuring out and, you know, so much learning and it comes through failing, inverted commas, <laughs> learning, learning on the job, right? That's the best kind of learning. So think about this. I am enough. I am enough. It's okay if I make mistakes. Can I forgive myself? Can I forgive myself and move on? Actually, I talk about forgiveness in the, I have a masterclass. Message me if you want it because it's been removed. The masterclass is called Find your F word for 2023. <laughs> and I gave that at this, I think at the yeah, the end of December. And inside that masterclass, I really liked it. And I think it did help people a lot because there was a part of it about um release work of and forgiveness, forgiveness for the mistakes, because we can be so hard on ourselves and really hold ourselves back. And that might be preventing you from stepping up and claiming the identity that you want to really step into you are enough <laughs> and believe me this is work for me too my coach says it to me too <laughs> you are enough you know and I think oh but I need to offer that and that and that <laughs> it's uh yeah it's just part of the human condition <laughs> that's great to have that awareness Okay, so the only real failure is the failure to try. Oh my God, it's 1517. Wow. Okay, I'm nearly finished. Sorry that I went over time, <laughs> but hopefully you're getting great value from this. I'm really enjoying sharing it. Okay, the only real failure is the failure to try. So 
I'm really encouraging you to try, try as hard as you can. So how would it feel? I want to talk with you. I did tell you that I would talk at the end about my mastermind. If you want to have my support on your CEO journey, support with your, with showing up, with visibility, with your fitness, with your confidence and with a like-minded group of people. So the name of my mastermind, I was Six Figure CEO Flow. I changed it to the club. I have so many exciting ideas for the club. This is an elite club for aspiring six-figure business owners. So inside this club, where I'm inviting you to reach out to me if you're attracted to joining it, it will be, you will be with like-minded people who are on that journey to, and Honestly, if you feel, you know, oh gosh, I don't know if I could get to six figures in six months, it's okay. You know, you can say, I will be on my way there. You will definitely do the inner work with me. It's one-to-one coaching and group coaching. There's two group coaching calls per week, one on business strategy and one on fitness, simplicity, all of those, you know, life <laughs> life skills that, that we need. So you get, I now I say unlimited coaching because really I want you to get the results. You will be my success stories. So I'm very dedicated and committed uh, to the people that join this uh, program. And um, it is my only offering because for me, moving forward, simplicity is key and being available for the clients who hire me. So it's like you can see uh, that every Friday I show up and give a live training. And that is something that I do consistently. And apart from that, it's the training that I'll be giving is inside my mastermind. So if you're interested in joining that, then reach out to me because I have a goal of getting five amazing women inside there by the end of January. And I have particularly <laughs> fun offer for people who signed up by the end of January. Okay. Oh yeah, there is inside it, you will also get, there's like there's certain business building, like today I went into niching down, but you get a lot more detailed um, instructions on how to niche your messaging, your company mission, things like that, things that are really important to reflect on. Um, so it's really about building a business, uh, what platforms to use and, you know, great support with uh, all those business building elements and some scripts as well that you can use. Bonus number two is the fit program. I know it's the fit program, but come on, come on, slides. It's like, there it is, the fit program. So the fit program is 30 lessons and there is eight of them available for free inside Six Figure Flow Facebook group. So you can get a flavor of what the fit program is, but you get all 30 lessons when you join Six Figure CEO Club. And it's I'm so passionate about helping people. You don't have to go to the gym and strength train, but just developing an efficient fitness and health routine. I love to help people with that because your health is your wealth. And honestly, honestly, the thing for me that's most important is waking up feeling good and grateful and fresh and healthy. And that's ultimately what I wish for everybody because yeah, that's, you know, waking up feeling crappy in life um, it's life's too short for that. It's got to live it to the full. And there is this time limited bonus, like I said, but reach out to me. I'm going to share. <laughs> I thought to myself, will I share this here? And I thought, no, people who are seriously interested, message me and I'll let you know what the bonus is. So that is the Six Figure CEO Club. <laughs> okay. And actually, Ooh, that is the end. That is the end. I finally reached the end. So if you're interested in my mastermind, then um, reach out to me. But otherwise, I'd be delighted to support you inside this Facebook group. And uh, I really enjoy giving these trainings every week. I will remove it on Monday. I move them over to the mastermind. Um, there's a separate Facebook group, um, but it will be available until Monday evening. As usual, every time, you know, if you can never, if you can't attend live, then you'll always have access to these free trainings until the Monday. Okay, if there's any questions, let me know. And also for the replay viewers, let me know. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for your interaction and uh, for showing up. And remember, you have now claimed that CEO identity. So you are showing up as that CEO. And I really wish you lots of courage and strength and determination and consistency and lots of impact with the people whose lives you are going to touch. Lots of love. Have a great weekend. Bye. Stop share. Mm -hmm. Bye.